Before I begin, can we please recite Dua Shafa Marie for all those who need our duas? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Amma yujibu al mutarra ida da'a wa yakshifu su. أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء 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 can I also get a surah fatiha for the following marhumin, marhum roshan, marhuma roshan and rush our uh, and sharbanu rai, amir rai, yusuf and zainab mandan, muhammad hussein bimani and all the marhumin. Surah al fatiha. <laughs> بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا أبا القاسم مصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على ظالمين الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا ان هدانا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان مثل عيسى عند الله كمثل ادم خلقه من تراب ثم قال له كن فيكون وامنا به نوروا مجالسكم بذكر محمد وآل محمد I ask everyone to recite with your loudest voices to the point that inshallah the neighbors complain recite a salawat that reaches Karbala recite a salawat which reaches his father Amir al-Mu'mineen in Najaf and recite the loudest voices to reach in Medina a salawat which will reach the heavens and shake the arsh of Allah Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Abbas, if the neighbors complain inshallah, get them to speak to me uh, Firstly, I'd like to begin this lecture with all praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala All praises due to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity so to sit in a gathering in which we can discuss the fadila of Amir al muminin and commemorate his son Abba Abdullah in such a gathering. All praises due to Allah for allowing us to taste the love of wilaya and understanding or having a little understanding of the wilaya for Amir al muminin Ali Salam. Secondly, I'd like to thank and credit this falila to Sayyid Ahmed Al Shirazi, who I was able to actually take parts of his lecture and from his book, this falila. So, inshallah, I'm not trying to take this credit as my own, but rather I was able to learn from him. And inshallah, I want to share with you. Now, before I always do, or before I go into the Masaib, I always like to start with the Fadila of Amir al Mu'mineen. The Fadila of Amir al Mu'mineen is so important to the point that <coughs> Rasulullah had said in his hadith 
that the one who narrates and the one who sits in the gathering of the Fadail of Amir al Mu'mineen, many hundreds and thousands of sins of his are forgiven. All of his sins are being forgiven. It takes only one sin to get you into Nar Jahannam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sharing the Fadila of Amir al Mu'mineen is forgiving all of these sins. We look at the Quran, and there's always a question that both the Ahlul Shia as well as the Ahlul Sunnah always ask each other. Amir al Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib's name is not in the Quran. Sure, you can say X verses about him, Y verses about him, you have a thousand verses about him, regardless of what they say. You can find any verse about Amir al Mu'minin, but his name is not in the Quran. Okay. So let's look at this. Firstly, when you look at the Quran, the Quran is generally, and I emphasize generally, talks about general concepts for, and instructions. It doesn't teach you certain aspects. For example, it tells you to perform your salah, but it doesn't teach you how to do the salah. It tells you you should, it, you should perform your hajj, but it doesn't teach you how to do your hajj. And it teaches you instructions on how to do wudu. In the Quran, you can see. But... When you look at the Quran, it talks about general things. It doesn't go in depth, including the name. How many Anbiya do we have? You guys can answer if you wish. Perfect, 124,000. But how many prophets and um, how many Anbiya is mentioned in the Quran? Only 25. If you look at this, there's so many prophets, but only 25 are mentioned in the Quran. This is one understanding. The second is that when you look at the Prophet, there are 25 Prophets. You look at Prophet Adam and Nabi Isa alayhi salam. And you look at them, Nabi Adam and Nabi Isa are both mentioned in the Quran 25 times. No, uh, Prophet Muhammad, Pro Rasulullah's name Muhammad in the Quran is only mentioned how many times? Four. His names are only mentioned four times in the Quran. Now, are you saying that Nabi Adam and Nabi Isa are higher than the Prophets? Both the Shia and the Sunni, at least the normal Sunnis, believe that Rasulullah is, at the, is the highest, holds the highest of all the Anbiya. He's not an equal rank. He's Khatim and Nabiin. He's the one who, who brought the religion or rather continued the religion or re, uh, brought back the religion of Islam. So when you look at this, Rasulullah, you have to understand, four times is mentioned in the Quran. Now, secondly, who are you to say that Imam Ali's name is not in the Quran? Anybody who says that Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib salam's name is not mentioned in the Quran is a liar. Either they are a liar or they are someone who is ignorant of the Quran. Which one is that? If you say that Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib's name is not in the Quran, have you truly read the Quran? And if you claim to truly study the Quran, then how much have you learned the Quran that you still cannot see Amir al muminis name in the Quran? When we look at Ali ibn Abi Talib's name in the Quran, firstly, there's different recitations when it comes to the Quran. Inshallah, that's for a different time and a different discussion. But this is an emphasis on the recitation of Ahlul Bayt, which inshallah we don't have as prominent today. However, when inshallah, when the Imam al Hujjah, Ajallah ta'ala Farj al Sharif, reappears, inshallah, this will be prominent. But when you recite your salah, you stick to what the Maraja say, the common recitation that we stick to today. Now, when we look at Imam Ali, Ali is spelled Ain, Ya, or Ain, Lam, Ya. Look at this. And we're no, we're not comparing Ali to Al Ali. Al Ali is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Al Ali stands for all, the All High, the All Exalted. That is for Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I'm just talking about Ali. And when you look at the Quran, we have to understand that there's also an importance of number. When you look and compare it in Islam, number is important. For example, you have. Seven heavens, you have the seven days of the week, you have the seven earths. <coughs> Nabi Musa went for 40 days from his people. When someone passes away, you commemorate their death for 40 days, or we have a majalis on the 40th of them, etc. Inshallah, that's another side point to come back, inshallah, when I relate Amir al Mu'minin back to the Prophet. When you look at dunya and akhirah, 
115 times bull. Dunya and Akhirah are together. When you look at dunya in the Quran, 115 times it's mentioned. When you look at Akhirah, 115 times it's mentioned. Now, we'll go back to the verse that I mentioned earlier. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, إِنَّ مَثَلَ عِيسَىٰ إِنَّ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ آدَمْ خَلَقَهُ مِن تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comparing Nabi Isa to Nabi Adam with similarities. Both of them did not have a father. And this is something that the Prophet had narrated to the Christians in events of Mubahila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comparing them to the likeness of each other. To the point that in the Quran, as I mentioned earlier, 25 times Nabi Isa is in the Quran, 25 times Nabi Adam is in the Quran by name. Now we go into the Quran and we look at what the Quran mentions. Continuing the verse that when Rasulullah went to the Christians and they set up a mubahila and he said, wa wa anis, bring your shelves, bring your children, we'll bring our children. Bring your women, we'll bring our women. Bring yourselves, one fusna, one fusakum. Bring yourselves and we'll bring ourselves. Imam Hussain and Imam Hassan came as the children. You have Sayyidah Fatima, Nisa al-Alameen, Salamu alayha, came as the women. And then you have Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib coming as the self of the Prophet. Not someone like the Prophet, but the self of the Prophet. This is Ali ibn Abi Talib. When you look at Amir al-Mu'mineen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala com commands the Prophet. Or rather the Prophet is bringing Amir al-Mu'mineen. And when he states to bring yourself, he's bringing Amir al-Mu'mineen as the self of the Prophet. Amir al-Mu'mineen is not different from the Prophet. Every single virtue Rasulullah has Amir al-Mu'mineen contains. Every single thing. If you want to understand Rasulullah, you must understand Ali. Rasulullah says, Ana Madinatul ilm wa aliyun babuha. If you want to get to Rasulullah, if you want to get into the city, of knowledge, you must go through Ali ibn Abi Talib. When we look at this and understand Amir al Mu'mineen, we have to understand that Amir al Mu'mineen holds the same merit as Rasulullah. Rasulullah was Khatim al Nabiin, the completion of the Anbiya. Amir al Mu'mineen was the completion of Islam. This is when you look at Amir al Mu'mineen, every single merit Imam Ali has, the Prophet has. And likewise, every single merit the Prophet has, Imam Ali has. This is one thing that we need to understand. Imam Ali and the Prophet comes from the same nur. They are not divided. You cannot separate them. The only difference that you can say between Imam Ali and Rasulullah is that Rasulullah is the Rasul and Imam Ali is the first of the A'imma. That's the difference. But however, when you look at it at the grander scale, it is very difficult to separate the two. When we continue, as I mentioned earlier, Rasulullah's name in the Quran is four times. Another miracle in the Quran, Imam Ali by the name Ali is mentioned in the Quran four times. Showing that the comparison that not only is Amir al muminin just as self as the Prophet, but similarly to Adam and Isa, Imam Ali is similar to Rasulullah. That in the Quran, just as many times that you have Rasulullah mentioned in the Quran, you have Amir al muminin in the Quran. Continuing on, we have four ayats. Now, if you look at the ma'asum, the 14 ma'asumin that we have, four of them are named Muhammad and four of them are named Ali. You have Rasulullah, then you have Muhammad al-Baqir, then you have Muhammad al-Jawad, and finally, Imam al-Hujjah, which I will not mention by the first name, Sallu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Muhammad. Finally, Amir al Mu'minin, you have Imam Sajjad, and then you have Imam Ali al Hadi, Imam Ali al Rada. Again, four names which Ali and four names which Muhammad, which are heavily important to us as Shia. When we look at the verses, four verses named Ali. I'm only going to go into one verse because of time. Inshallah, we can have pleasant sleep, and inshallah, tomorrow, even though it's a weekend. Or a holiday, you guys can at least go home and sleep in tomorrow. Now we go into the first ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah 15, number ayah number 41. 
قال هذا صراط علي مستقيم emphasis on صراط علي مستقيم this aliyah is the modern day of recitation however al ahlul bayt says this ayah says qala hadha sirat aliyan mustaqim this haya common translation says he said that this is a path upon me that is straight now when we look at ahlul bayt alayhi salam and see what ahlul bayt says you see imam imam jafar al sadiq he talks about this ayah where in mukhtasir basaira al darajat from Abi Hamza al thamani where he comes up to Imam Sajjad and asks about this ayah. Imam, Sajjad, Imam, sorry, Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam then says that by Allah he is Ali. By Allah he is the scale and the straight path. And in a similar hadith, Imam al-Sadiq also makes this comparison that when you look at Ali and you want to understand Ali is Sirat al-Mustaqim, in this ayah it tells you that Ali is the Sirat al-Mustaqim. <laughs> Yeah. Now this, I, this hadith I love I truly love Because it separates the munafiqeen From those who love Ahlul Bayt It separates those who like to degrade Ahlul Bayt To those who love And try to do everything for Ahlul Bayt <coughs> Understand that this is a sunnah of Rasulullah And this is in a tradition In Ma'a al Manaqibah. Where Umar ibn al-Khattab al-Layeen stood to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi And he said Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alayhi wa alayhi Umar al-Layeen stands up to the Prophet And he says You do not stop speaking about Ali ibn Abi Talib You say that Ali is like me Ali is like Harun was to Musa Except there was no Prophet after me But Ali is not in the Quran Likewise Musa is At this moment the Prophet gets angry He gets angry at Umar ibn al-Khattab And he tells him That oh Umar He tells him oh Arab He even uses a certain word Which is translated It's very hard to translate But if you want to actually look at it It means thick headed or someone who doesn't actually think properly. Someone's hard headed. Rasulullah says, Oh, hard headed person, oh, Bedouin or Arab, have you not heard Allah saying in the Quran? And he goes back to this verse. Hada. Qala hadha saratan aliyun mustaqim. Rasulullah is saying that have you not heard this verse in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Ali is sirat al mustaqim. So if you're trying to say stop saying Ali, stop talking about Ali, Ali is in the Quran. Ali is the Quran. Allah, Allah. When you want to get to the straight path, when you want to, when you recite, Five times in your salah, you recite Ehdina Sirat al Mustaqim. The Ehdina Sirat al Mustaqim. When we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the right path, that path is Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Now we continue from Alama Majlisi in Hayat al Qulub. When he goes with this verse, Ahdina Sirat al Mustaqim, and he uses Imam al Sadiq to explain this from a Sahih hadith, from a strong narration. He says, or Imam al Sadiq says, that the right path, Sirat al Mustaqim, is Ali alayhi salam. And the proof of his recognition is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As it says, when you look at this, that if you wish to get to Allah, you must go through Ali. Prior to Ghadir, before Rasulullah had mentioned, Man kuntu mawla fahada aliyun mawla. Allah reveals to the Prophet to reveal what has been revealed unto you. And if you don't, everything you've done for this religion no longer has worth in it. Ya Allah, what does the Prophet need to reveal? He reveals, man, he builds a member. At that member, he says, Allah is my my master and I am your master for whomsoever I'm the master of Ali is your master Rasulullah says that regardless if you want if I have something over you Ali has that same weight over you this moment when we look at that moment Rasulullah mentions this mentions this tradition 
At that moment, Angel Jibra'il comes down from the heavens and reveals the verse, Today, Al-Yawma Akmaltu Lakum Deenakum. Today, the religion of Islam has been completed. Ya Allah, was everything Rasulullah did for you not sufficient that you had to reveal Amir al-Mu'mineen? Uh, no, it's just to state that regardless, your Hajj, your Zakah, your Som, your Salah, everything that you do without the Wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen is not worth it at all. The Wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen is everything and anything that you need to strive for. Everything you need is the Wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen. <laughs> Finish with the final part and then the musibah. This final part is from Khutbat al Bayan. Where Amir al Mu'mineen gives a long tradition, and I'm not going to say it all today because of time, but just a small extract. Where Amir al Mu'mineen mentions that I am Lohay Mafuz. I am Jambu Allah and Qalab Allah. I am the one who controls over people's views and the beliefs that they will all return to us. And we are entrusted with the authority to evaluate their deeds. Amir al Mu'min is Qasim al Nari wal Jannah. I am the one about Rasulullah who said, O oh Ali, you are the conduct to the Sirat al Mustaqim, and your judgment is in fact the verdict of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have the divine knowledge about the past and the future uh-huh. I am the companion of the first Adam and the final and the final I am the one who is the helper of the first no Allah Allah Amir al Mu'mineen is the helper of the Anbiya every time the Anbiya said Ya Ali when Adam needed to sp- step through the fire he said Ya Ali uh-huh. when Musa wanted to split the sea he said Ya Ali uh-huh. when Isa wanted to raise the dead he said Ya Ali uh-huh. in the battles when Rasulullah needed help who did he call he said ya ali in the battle of uhud rasulullah said rasulullah called when all the companions had left rasulullah he yelled out ya ali at this moment angel jibrail brought down the sword with the famous quote la fatta illa ali la saifa illa When we look at the verse, Guide us to the right path, the right, the path of those whom you've blessed. Allah. The path of those whom you've blessed. From the hadith, the path of those whom you've blessed is Ali Muhammad. But when you look at what society had treated Ali Muhammad, You look at after Rasulullah, how they treated Ali Muhammad. How they treated the daughter of Rasulullah. When you look at Ali Muhammad, who is Ahdina Sirat al-Mustaqeem, see how they treated the Sirat al-Mustaqeem. They could not defeat him in the battlefield, yet they had to defeat him while he was praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But today's musibah is dedicated to the one who represents Rasulullah. The one who looks like Rasulullah. The one who talks like Rasulullah. The one who sounds like Rasulullah. To the point that Imam Hussain will ask him to recite the adhan so he can hear Rasulullah. When the woman would want to remember Rasulullah, they would look at Ali ibn al-Akbar. The tradition mentions they had come a point where all the companions of Imam Hussain, where is John, where is Abbas, where is Zuhair, where is Habib, none of them were yet to be seen. We look at this 
and the first and the tradition say the first of Bani Hashim, the youth of Bani Hashim that was to go fight was Ali and Al-Akbar. Ali and Al-Akbar was the one who represents and looks like Rasulullah and Imam Hussein wanted to use and show him as his first sacrifice before he would use anybody else from Bani Hashim. You look at Ali and Al-Akbar. At the moment, the time comes, Ali and Al-Akbar goes to Imam al Hussein. He requests his, he goes to his father, Ya Aba, I'm ready to go fight in battle. Imam al Hussein begins to tear with his tears starting to reach his cheeks. At this moment, Ali and Al-Akbar and Imam al Hussein begin to embrace each other to the point until they had fallen down. Ali and Al-Akbar starts to get on his horse, bids his farewell to Mawla Hussein. He goes into the battlefield. At this moment, the enemies of Allah tell Ali and Al-Akbar, Oh Ali, you are related to Yazid. Come to us, we will give you your sanctity. At this moment, Ali and Al-Akbar tells them, Ali and Al-Akbar gets upset and he's infuriated with them. He tells them, that I don't have a relationship with you. The relationship that I have is with Rasulullah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and blessings, peace and blessings be upon Rasulullah that is not worthy of anything else. That defending Rasulullah is what is needed to be safeguarded. Then he, fo- he starts to recite these verses. Ana Ali ibn al Hussein ibn Ali. I am the Ali, the son of Hussein, the son of Ali. We by the Lord of the Kaaba are more worthy of the Nabi, by Allah we shall be ruled by the Da'i, with the sword shall I defend my family, by the strong like a young Hashimi Qarashi, at this moment Imam al Hussein could not help but start tearing, he begins to cry, he yells out to Umar ibn Sa'd al what is the matter with you, may Allah cut off your lineage, just as you have cut off mine, just as you have not respected my children, to the message, my my relationship to the Messenger of Allah, then may He send upon you someone that should slay you in your own bed. At this moment, Imam Hussein takes off his turban, he raises his hands to Allah, he says, Oh Allah, bear witness amongst these foes that a man who looks like your Messenger, Muhammad in his physique, in his manners, in his eloquence, has come out to fight them. Whenever we miss your Prophet, we would look at him. Oh Allah, deprive them from your blessings of earth. Create dissension among them and make them into parties. Do not let them rule. Do not let their rulers ever be pleased with them. For they invited us to support us and they transgressed on and us and for, fought us. At this moment, Ali and Al-Akbar goes into the battlefield. He fights the right wing and he defeats the right wing. He fights the left and he defeats the right left. Whenever a group would fight him, the, he would disperse them. He would repulse them. He would destroy them. It's as if it was Haydar Al-Qarrar came down from the heavens. Amir al It's as if Amir al muminin came down from the heavens. Anybody who was brave enough to fight Ali and Al-Akbar, Ali and Al-Akbar with the strike of his sword, wiped and ended that man's life. He killed a total of 120 men. Now thirst started to take a toll on Ali and Al-Akbar. Ali and Al-Akbar, after wiping out this many enemies, he begins to fall thirsty. At this moment, a man starts to come and attack Ali and Al-Akbar from the side. Imam Hussein begins to frown. Imam Hussein tells Layla, Oh Layla, make a dua to Allah to bring Ali and Al-Akbar back. If there's a dua that will be accepted, it is the dua of the mother. Uh, Layla makes the dua, Ya Allah, the one who brought back Yusuf to Yaqub, the one who brought back Ismail to Hajar. Ya Allah, in the name of the ghurbat of Imam Al-Hussein, in the name of the loneliness, 
thirst of Imam Al Hussein. Ya Allah, in the name of the thirst of Imam Al Hussein, bring back my son Ali Al Akbar. Allah, Allah. At this moment, the narration say that Ali Al Akbar defeated this man. He comes back to the camp. He comes back to the Khaima. He he he, be, he comes to Imam Al Hussein. He bids his final farewell. He tells his father that he is thirsty. At this moment, Imam Al Hussein tells him, Oh Ali, don't worry, don't worry, there'll be water waiting for you at the pool of Kawthar. Rasulullah has a cup waiting for you, oh Ali. Ali al Akbar at this moment become happy. He was satisfied. Um, before he left, Imam Hussein said, Bid your final farewell to your mother. At this moment, he went to Layla. He went to his mother Layla and bid his father self farewell. <coughs> At this moment, Ali in Al Akbar goes back into the battlefield. He fights them off as if he was a few, as if he was Amir al Mu'minin descending from the heavens. When he disperses the enemies, he begins to fight valiantly. He disperses the enemies. Anybody who came to Ali in Al Akbar, he shattered them. Anybody who came to him, he fought them. Ali in Al Akbar came to defend Imam Al Hussein. As he advances again towards the enemy, he meets the enemy face to face. At this moment, a man named Mura ibn Munqidh comes to him, says that I bear all sins of the Arab. Should I not succeed in causing? his father to lose him for good. At this moment, Mura takes a spear. He throws it at the back of Ali al Akbar. He shoots Ali al Akbar. The spear pierces the back of Ali al Akbar. At this moment, Mura takes a sword, hits the head of Ali al Akbar. At this moment, blood started to fall to the eyes of Ali al Akbar. Ali al Akbar puts his head on the horse, on his horse. At this moment, because of the amount of blood that was falling from Ali al Akbar's head, it falls to the eyes of the horse. The horse cannot see. The horse begins to go to the enemy. The en Ali al Akbar at this moment was surrounded by the enemies. They begin to throw their spears on Ali al Akbar. They begin to cut him. The hadith says Ali al Akbar was cut into pieces. At this oh, moment, yeah. Ali al Akbar yells to his father, Salam alayka ya Abba Abdullah. Oh, salam my father Abba Abdullah. At this moment, Abba Abdullah goes into Ali al Akbar. He goes into Ali al Akbar and puts him on his lap. He said, Ali al Akbar, at this moment, with a very low voice, he tells his father, Oh Abba, I see Rasulullah, my thirst has been quenched. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh Abba Abdullah, Amir al Mu'minin is saying, Al Ajal, Al Ajal, Ya Abba Abdullah, there's a cup of water for you. Ya Ibrahim, at this moment, Ali al Akbar began silent. Ali al Akbar became silent. Ya Ibrahim, you were, you were commanded to kill your son Ismail, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give give you such a treasure stack. But Ya Ibrahim, had you ever taken a spear out of your own son? Allah! What's the word?